Welcome to part five on the Indy 600. All right, here's a quick recap of where we are. So uh, last week I got most of the drive line in, meaning I got the track, the skid, the drive shaft, the jack shaft, and the uh, inner half of the chain case in. So this week I got to get this uh, reverse chain case together, and I'll try to give you some shots of that as it goes together, and uh, just keep going. Maybe get into the front suspension if I have enough time. Now, I know a lot of you are going, where the heck is Dennis and Lonnie? Well, so am I. All right. In all fairness, the boys both had to travel for work last week, and I've scarcely seen them. I saw both of them for like 15 minutes yesterday at the Frankensteiner's car show. So hopefully uh, this week everything will get back to normal. Car shows are over for the season, and uh, maybe we can just get back to work on sleds. So uh, if you want to get Dennis and Lonnie back in the videos, uh, they read the comments. So go ahead and leave a comment. Tell those guys to get back in the shop with me. I know they'd like to hear from you. All right, well, before I get rolling, I need to clean all these parts. Um, this reverse chain case has been sitting around for a number of years, and even though it did have a lid on it, it's accumulated enough grime. We're going to hose everything down. But uh, let's go through the parts, and then I'll walk you through how it goes together later. I might do a little bit of a mock-up here on this uh, workbench. So... Um, the first thing is this lower spacer, okay? So uh, that lower spacer goes on the drive shaft first. Then the lower inside gear goes on. You can see that's got a needle bearing. We're going to have to get that all cleaned up. Uh, then the sleeve goes into that. So let's just, we'll just start stacking stuff. It won't match the words on the hood anymore. But then after the sleeve, we got the lower outer gear that goes on. So we just drop that guy in. Bingo! Then you put on your spring, you put on this cap piece, and then this bolt that goes all the way through to the drive shaft. So that's how your lower gears go together. Now we've got our mid gears, and there's two kinds of mid gears. One's got a chain tooth profile, and one's got an involute gear profile. Let me get you in there. That left one's the chain tooth. So uh, first you drop a spacer onto the shaft. And then you drop in the chain tooth with those two dogs facing up. See these dogs here? Then you drop on your gear, your gear involute, and then you throw another spacer on that. So that's how your mid goes. Your upper gear, it's just a plain upper gear. Pretty much uh, your basic Polaris tensioner there, your basic chain. And uh, if you zoom in on the chain there, you can see, I think that's a high bow chain. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it uh, doesn't look like the normal chain. So, uh, I don't know, that's what I'm up to right now. I'm going to get all this stuff cleaned up, and then uh, we'll get to assembling it on the chain case. Well, there we go. There's all the reverse chain case parts all cleaned up and laid out. And uh, looky what I dug out this week. My last one. You know, so uh, that's perfect. I got one complete reverse chain case set up. So, uh, I'll start getting this together and show you the order. All right, hopefully this camera holds steady. I got it on kind of a interesting setup to get these images. So first, it's that uh, thrust washer. Am I even showing it to you? There it is. So uh, that's just a thrust washer. It just kind of goes on there and lives there. And then uh, next, it's that inner gear and the sleeve. So these dogs, they go out. So. Uh, just get that on and then we're going to start thinking about how we get that chain on. Come on sleeve. So now we got to get the chain on. The chain's a little complicated because it's got to go on these gears, this gear, and the top gear all at once. And actually it only has to go on the inner gear here on this mid shaft. So we're going to stick a thrust washer in there and then we're going to select the one that's the chain profile, not the involute gear profile you can kind of tell just by the shape the shape on the chain profile well it matches the shape of the chain gears all right so this top gear 
doesn't really have any thrust washer or anything. It just rides on that bearing. It's got that sleeve. Other chain cases, your mileage may vary. But uh, on this guy, that's that's what I'm seeing today. Huh. Well, I kind of suspected this. So uh, we'll just stick that on there for the moment. And of course, these coolant hoses make everything much more pleasant to work around. But I do like liquid cooled triples, and I'm sure you do too. So let's get the gear on the chain. Come on, I know you came apart. You're gonna go together. Here we go. Get a little gear on chain action there. Now we'll get that sleeve back on. And then we gotta slip this gear out and kind of get him engaged so the chain will take him in. And then this top gear has gotta get engaged. Boy. See what I mean about how it's going to kind of fight you a little bit there? We'll slip that bottom gear out. This chain's pretty fresh. In fact, this whole setup seems to be pretty fresh. So, now I get that on the splines. Got this bottom one on the splines. Oh, except for I'm halfway off on the chain. All right. Let's get that top one on the splines. Get the chain engaged so it'll go down on it. Come on, got to do that and this all at once. That one should just go on for the ride. Not quite in yet. There we go. Ta da! All right, so uh, let me tell you, that was the worst part. And uh, sorry you're looking from the side, but I had to look at it from straight on or I was never going to get it together. So uh, that was the worst part by far. All right, the next part, you got options. You, you could put together this mid, you could put your nut on the top, you could even put your tensioner on. But uh, I'm going to go down here to the bottom and get this gear on. And you'll notice, see this? That's springy. And uh, that's when you shift it, if your teeth aren't necessarily aligned, uh, that springiness lets you shift it. And then as soon as you uh, start to go forward, your dog clutches will align. So that's why you got to kind of ease into it when you go from uh, forward to reverse and vice versa. All right. There we go. Not bad. All right, so that bolt with the spring is typically a pain in the ass. So I'm going to use a shallow socket, and I'm going to drop a nut in it. And uh, what that's going to do, oh, that's too deep of a nut. Oh, that'll work. What that's going to do is let me actually push on that bolt head while I'm torquing this thing down. So, uh, oh, I dropped my nut already. Well, that didn't take long. <sighs> Let's see if I could drop that nut like three, four, four more times. Uh, all right. So then you have to drive that into the end of the drive shaft. Well, come on, buddy. Wow. All right. All right. I'm getting sick of chasing that nut around the floor. So we're going to jam it in with a little electrical tape this time. Maybe it'll help. Yeah, it helped. All right. So let's try to get that guy all lined up with the hole. All right. Well, truth be told, Starting that thing with a ratchet and turning it at the same time sucked. So I got out the old air, uh, little air bopper here and wrapped her down and it went quite well. Am I recommending that? Nah, take your chances if you try it. All right, so we're damn near done with this. It's uh, this guy and a thrust washer. And that. So I got to find two pieces. Uh, I got to find the uh, 
got to find the adjuster bolt, the all thread bolt for there. And I got to find a nut and washer for up here. I know exactly where those are. So I'll go dig that crap up and we'll get her together. All right, we got our little adjuster on there. And uh, I found my, my spring washer that goes up here and a castle nut. Boy, that castle nut looks new. You'd almost think a guy realized that this uh, particular reverse chain case set was missing the castle nut and maybe ordered it a week or two ago so he had it in time. Nah. All right, there you go. So I just took a little screwdriver action, tapped on the tails to get them bent over, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So next I'll be putting on the new gasket, put on the cover, and then when you put the cover on, there's a bolt that goes here. Oh, why don't I show you that on the cover? All right, so here's your cover. 3 16th bolt with the big washer goes here. It's nothing special. It's maybe an inch long, inch and a quarter, something like that maybe inch and a half I don't know don't bottom out your threads and then the other thing is when you're putting this cover on this is a little shifter mechanism these little pegs here they're what pulls it into reverse and I do mean pull so they go into this groove down here and pull that outward so when it goes out this gear slides out and engages with this intermediate gear and that's how you get your magic reverse there's another thing I want to mention if you go back to the start of this assembly and watch it again, there was never a gasket on here. It's because it's always a pain in the ass to get that bottom tooth around the gasket. And I like new gaskets. I'm not a cheap ass. These are super cheap, so uh, I just put one on every time. So time for that. It's not, uh, not that I enjoy it. It's a pain in the ass to get it around the bottom gear. And either way, you have a pain in the ass. But here we go. Here's another one for you. If you're having trouble getting that gasket on around the bottom corner down there give her a little lube she slips right on goes on much easier than trying to put it on dry i just put the lube on the chain case i try not to get it all too messy but now when i uh, do the outer cover i'll lube all the way around the whole thing helps then too all right we're getting there buttoned up now so uh the chain case is together but i've only got the one screw I gotta get three more. The problem is they're inch and a quarter. Everything I have at home is either one inch or inch and a half. So that's a special trip to the hardware store. And then the other thing I want to show you quick over here, these set screws. So uh, I wait until I have the, the upper and lower gears tightened up on the chain case before I tighten up those set screws. Uh, the reason is as you tighten them, you might shift your drive shaft or jack shaft over to the chain case side. And that would put a lot of unnecessary binding and tension on the bearing and the bulkhead. And uh, we don't need any of that. We like our bearings to last for a while. So uh, there you go. Get that buttoned up and then on to the next thing. All right, I'm going to wrap up the video right there. So uh, we're going to end with the chain case this time. So this beer, this is my editing beer. So I can get the videos edited good. So uh, we'll start next time on the front suspension. So I want to thank the patrons, Aaron Shriver, Michael Johnson, Matt Fossey, Charles Myers, Alex Shirell, Brandon Pariso, Dan Hasnut, Mike Jerish, Louis Brady, Jeff Eisert, and Brian Peters is our newest patron. Welcome, Brian. So uh, patrons going well. You should definitely check it out. Those guys are getting some behind the scenes and some other content that's maybe not sled content, not making it to the main channel here. Uh, they're the only ones seeing that stuff. So if you're interested, go check out the patron. And uh, hopefully Dennis and Lonnie will be back over here in the next day or two. And we'll start in on the next video. And uh, we'll see you on the trails.